hello friend you are welcome again to my channel okay so this video is a continuation of my recent video with the title house wiring basic load calculation all right so in this particular one i will take you through a step-by-step -step procedure to choose the correct size of service cable for large residential electrical wiring projects. You must carefully choose the service cable in order to be able to carry the demand load or the load demand of the wiring. Okay, to choose the right size of service cable for large residential electrical wiring projects, you need to go through the steps I'm going to show you in this video. Okay, so usually 16 millimeter squared cable is sufficient for most residential wiring. But in cases where you have many loads in the wiring, then you must carefully choose the service cable in order to be able to carry the demand load or the load demand of the wiring. Good. And if you are able to carefully follow the steps in this video, you will be able to select the right cable size to ensure that your electrical project is safe, it works efficiently, and complies with wiring regulations and standards. Notwithstanding, if there are specific local standards or country-specific standards in your jurisdiction pertaining to how to select the right size of service cable for an electrical project, those standards must be considered. Good. And please, if this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to get updated for my upcoming videos. Share with your friends who may also have interest in these videos. Okay, let's get started. So the first step we are going to look at is to determine the total connected load. So first of all, we have to know the total load that is connected in the wiring. So we first of all have to list all the electrical appliances and their power ratings. In the previous video, I explained how to go about calculating your lighting load. Good. You also have air conditioners, water heaters, refrigerators. Sometimes you may also have water pumps and other loads. You have to make sure that you know the power consumption or the current rating of all the loads that you are going to use in the wiring. So you add the lighting load, you add the refrigerators, you add the air conditioners, you add the water heaters, you add the water pumps, you sum up the total power consumption of the wiring you have done. All right, so after summing up all the loads in the wiring, what do we do next? Okay. Let's look at step two. Step two, we need to estimate the demand load or the load demand of the wiring. All right, so the demand load refers to the actual electrical load that a system is expected to carry at a given time. All right, so usually you have a whole lot of things installed in the wiring, but you are not going to use everything in the wiring at the same time okay so the demand load is the amount of load that can be in use at a particular time or the maximum amount of load that can be in use at a particular time so we are going to estimate the actual demand of electricity for the wiring that we have done which means that at a particular time how much exactly will be the maximum amount of power that will be needed to power loads that are likely to be operating simultaneously at a particular time. So this means that the demand load is actually lower than the total connected load. All right, so here, in order to get the demand load, we are going to apply what we call diversity factor so diversity factor accounts for the fact that not all the loads in the wiring will operate at their full capacity simultaneously all right so typically 
for residential settings, diversity factor is usually between 0.4 to 0.7. There are cases where diversity is 1. When diversity is 1, what it simply means is that all the loads in the wiring can be in operation at the same time, simultaneously. All right. But in residential settings, as I explained earlier, most of the times we use between 40% and 70% of the total connected load at a particular time. All right. So here, as a wiring professional, some of the things you assume, okay, you use your experience and then questioning to assume. So for instance, we have to choose between 0.4 and 0.7 diversity factor to get our demand load. Now, it is up to you, the professional, to know which particular diversity factor will be appropriate depending on the questions and the knowledge you have about how the wiring is going to be used. And this must be done properly because if it is not done properly, it is going to affect the cable size that you are going to choose. Because if you choose a lower diversity factor than what the system actually represents, then your service cable is going to be smaller than it should be. All right. So here, there are two ways that we can go about this. So after calculating the sum of the individual loads, then you apply the appropriate diversity factor. Another way of doing it is that since there are different loads in the wiring, you can group the loads differently and apply the appropriate diversity factors to the various load groups and then add them up to get the total load demand. Okay, so let's continue. So in, in one wiring, the diversity factor you apply to the socket may differ from the diversity factor you apply to the load demand calculation of the sockets in another wiring. Now, the next step is that we have to determine the current rating of the load demand. Okay, it is actually the current that we are after. When doing this kind of calculation, we assume that all those appliances will not operate at 100% efficiency. So we also consider power factor. So now our current will be power divided by voltage times power factor. Typically in residential loads, power factor uh, ranges between 0 0.85 to 0 0.95. All right, so why are we looking for current? We are looking for current because we want to know what size of cable to use that can safely carry that amount of current. So after getting your current, then now we move on to choose the cable size based on the current rating. All right, so here, what we are going to do is we have to look at the current we have gotten from the calculation, and then we refer to either a cable manufacturer's table or standard charts most cable manufacturers have a table that will tell you the size of the cable and the maximum current that it can carry okay so they have it in a chart form or in a table form otherwise you can also make reference to standard charts like uh, tables from the iec nec or bs7671 so let's look at this table, for instance. All right, so this table is saying that a 10 millimeter squared cable can carry current between 40 to 50 amp. This variation will account for uh, the quality of the cable and then maybe factors like ambient temperature. All right, so it is best if you refer to the cable manufacturer's table. All right, so before I end, I want to go over the steps again. So first of all, you get a list of all the loads you want to connect in the wiring, and then you calculate the total connected load by adding the individual power ratings of all the loads you want to connect. 
And then the next step is that you apply diversity factor to the calculated actual load demand. And then you use the actual load demand, which is calculated in wattage, to calculate the current. Then after you have gotten the current, you now make reference or you refer to a standard table in accordance with the current you have gotten so that you get a cable that can easily carry that current. All right, so I'll end this particular video here, but I'm going to do another video. And in that video, I'll show an example of how to go about the calculations. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please don't forget to hit on the like button, share, and in case you have not yet subscribed, please kindly do so to get connected. Thank you very much again. See you in the next video.